I try to explain what I'm capable of, but we don't have the million years it would take for you to understand. Some, I guess, cultural pop references were, of course, The Wizard of Oz, Sunset Boulevard, Citizen Kane, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the archetype of the wizard and what happens to him when he gets bored, you know, and he becomes a trickster. Guys, if I was gonna do an exploding chair, why wouldn't I just do an exploding floor? And I think when we meet he who remains, he's on the borderline of those two things. You don't really know where he's at. And I think the ambiguity of that is one of the uh, wicked things about it. You think I'm just here with you. <laughs> I am everywhere. Like we're watching the flowering of the next phase of the Marvel Universe. The variant of he who remains, the one he's been talking about, the one that he's so afraid of, yes, sir. is Kang. Kang is bent on destruction, and I'm so curious to see what Jonathan does in the future. I think with He Who Remains, the, the objective for me was to give me the largest canvas possible. And then from that, as Kang begins to wear his head and do his deeds, in so many ways, he has no choice but to be in opposition or to be different from He Who Remains. Don't forget to like and subscribe.